Hey, this is George from DinosaurGeorge.com, answering the questions I get from all of you from all around the world. So let's get into it. This first question is from Ethan from Nexar Malta. Ethan, nice to hear from you. He says, hey, DG. Hey, Ethan. Uh, what species of pterosaurs are those seen on Gastonia's back in the episode Raptor's Last Stand of your interesting show Jurassic Fight Club? If you know, could you please tell me how to spell it? I ordered your show about a month ago, but instead it's named Dinosaur Secrets. Very cool anyway. Ethan, yeah, uh, History Channel, for whatever reason, uh, found out that the, the title, Jurassic Fight Club didn't uh, didn't do very well. People didn't like that title. Uh, to tell you the truth, I never really liked that title that much either. I thought it kind of kind of cheapened the show actually. So it's shown all over the world as Dinosaur Secrets, but here in the U.S. it's still run as Jurassic Fight Club. Uh, those pterosaurs, you know, I cannot for the life of me remember the name of the pterosaur that they were patterned after, but they were indeed patterned after a a kind of a mid-Cretaceous pterosaur found in Utah in that part of the state. So I can't remember the name of the little guy. It was a it was a very odd name, I can tell you that. Of course, a lot of pterosaurs' names sound kind of odd, but this guy had a very strange little name, kind of a hard name to pronounce. So I, I wish I knew the name of it off the top of my head. I just don't, I just can't remember. All right, John from Lake District, England. Hey, DG, I know pterosaurs were flying reptiles. But do you think it's possible that they were marine reptiles and their wings were actually used like flippers? Thanks, and I'm a huge fan. Well, John, thank you very much, and I appreciate you being a fan. I, I, I'm, I'm certainly honored by that. Um, okay, we do find pterosaurs in and around aquatic areas, areas based on the fossil record that shows us they preferred to be near the shoreline. They probably lived their lives sort of similar to modern-day pelicans and... and um, uh, seagulls and that kind of thing. Now, whether they were living in the sea, that's unlikely, and I'll tell you why. When we look at the bone structure of animals that live in the sea, that have flippers that are used to propel their body through the water, those bones are incredibly heavy duty and they needed to be to be able to, um, to push themselves through the water. They have to have very thick heavy bones, and they had to have very, very heavy muscles attached to those bones. Um, animals that use them to fly, like pterosaurs, their bones are very, very lightweight, almost built like a, like a wooden kite, very, very thin. Their musculature is not as robust as an animal that lives in the ocean. So when we look at the skeleton, it's easy to determine that these animals weren't capable of swimming underwater necessarily because they didn't have the musculature or the bone structure. It's sort of like this, John. If you are going to paddle a boat or a canoe, you want a very stiff, hard paddle that allows you to move through the water without the paddle bending. Imagine trying to paddle with a piece of spaghetti. You can't do it because it's too light, it's too thin, it won't make you go anywhere. So even though that's a very interesting question, John, the evidence is pretty clear in this case that pterosaurs probably, if they ever went into the water, this has always been a mystery to me, is how did they ever get out? Um, they may have been able to float like modern gulls or pelicans perhaps, but getting out of the water may have been tough for the really big ones. I have often wondered what happened to them if they accidentally fell into the water. Could they get out? Would they have to row all the way back to shore? What would happen? Uh, certainly if they did go into the water, there was plenty of aquatic reptiles that would have loved to have tasted them. So it would have been pretty dangerous to go in there. All right, Jaden from Cabo de Praia, Azores, Portugal. Jaden, I appreciate you spelling out for me how Cabo de Praia is pronounced. I got it right. Woohoo! All right. Uh, he says, hello, George. Hope you're having a good day, and thank you for answering my questions. Jaden, it's my pleasure. Thank you for taking the time to write to me. My first question is, who would win in a fight between Giganotosaurus or Carcharodontosaurus? You know, those two dinosaurs are so similar to me that I don't know if one has an advantage over the other. Um, I've seen and studied the skull of Giganotosaurus, but I've never had the chance to study uh, Carcharodontosaurus. But looking at images of him, they to me look very similar. So I think in this particular case, it may be a toss up. It may be the flip of a coin of who might win between those two animals. My next question is, <clears throat> when a juvenile T-Rex was killed by a Nanotyrannus, did anyone find the remains of Nanotyrannus? Thank you for using your time to do this for everyone. P.S. Allosaurus has a chance at replacing Tyrannosaurus Rex as my new favorite dinosaur. Woohoo! I'm getting closer. I've got one more convert. <laughs> my alarm just went off on my phone. I've got one more convert. Yes, yes. Uh, I hope ultimately you do like Allosaurus more than Tyrannosaurus Rex because Allosaurus is my favorite. 
Um, okay, we discovered, we being a, a friend of mine and his crew, uh, discovered the remains of a juvenile Tyrannosaurus Rex. And all around him, we found broken teeth of Nanotyrannus. So that's a pretty good indication that Nanotyrannus and a juvenile Tyrannosaurus Rex interacted. So that's as close as we've got. Never found any fossil remains other than teeth. Uh, when a predator feeds on a carcass or gets into a fight, it's, it, it, it happens all the time. They break off their teeth, but they grow new ones back, so it's irrelevant to them. But they break off their teeth. So we find these teeth, uh, or as Dr. Robert Bacher calls them, uh, these teeth are like bullets found in a crime scene. They tell you a whole lot of information. So we find these nanotyrannus bullets all around the carcass of a dead juvenile Tyrannosaurus Rex. It must have been a pretty amazing scene to see what was going on there. All right, Ryan from Pembroke, New Hampshire. You know, Ryan, I think you're the first person from Pembroke. You may be the first person from New Hampshire that's written to me. That's really cool, man. Well, congratulations and thank you. He says, hi, Dinosaur George. I'm the biggest dinosaur fan in New Hampshire. Well, that's so cool, man. I have two questions. First, who would win in a fight between Megalodon and Lyplorodon? Uh, let me ask you, answer your first one, Ryan. In my opinion, Megalodon would have an advantage. Now, these animals didn't live together at the same time, but um, if they did, I think Megalodon would have an advantage simply because its ability to turn its body more quickly because it doesn't have a bony skeletal structure. And second of all, it never has to come up for air, whereas Lyplorodon uh, is a slave to the air. He's got to come up. He absolutely has to come up and get a breath at some point in time. And when he does that, uh, he's, in, uh, he's in all kinds of trouble. Uh, so in my opinion, Megalodon would, would absolutely tear this guy up. Second, have you heard the idea that Dracorex and Stigmaloc were actually younger versions of Pachycephalosaurus? You know, I have. Here's my opinion of all that. Right now, there's a big push to sort of start lumping all these dinosaurs into one family group. We see it with Taurosaurus and Triceratops. We see it with Pachycephalosaurus. I just don't buy into this notion that these animals look so dramatically different when they were younger and suddenly morphed into something completely different. To me, in my opinion, and this is solely based on just my opinion, because I certainly am not doing the amount of research that some of these paleontologists that are proposing this are doing, so I don't wanna, I don't wanna take anything away from their research, but I look at it from, an, from a modern day animal perspective. It just doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. You don't see animals morph into something totally different. When you're a deer, you look like a deer on the day you're born and you look like a deer on the day you die of old age. You, a moose looks the same, elephants look the same, rhinoceros, horses, camels, sheep, llamas, goats, cows, lions, tigers, cheetahs, leopards, none of these animals morph into something different. They simply get larger. Now it's true that in the antelope and deer family, uh, they grow, the males grow horns, but they're not morphing into a different animal. They're just the same animal now with antlers and horns. So I completely and absolutely believe that we have gone overboard in this notion that we now should begin lumping all these dinosaurs together simply because they have similar features and we're proposing that they're changing. I just completely, totally disagree with that. All right, finally, Brandon from Morris, New York says, yesterday is my birthday. Well, happy birthday to you, Brandon, one day late. Uh, that, that's so cool, man. He says, who would win in a brawl? I like the word brawl. Arctotus or Gigantopithecus? Well, these are two enormous animals. They don't live together. They didn't live at the same time. I think Arctotus was in the Pleistocene, and I believe Gigantopithecus was Miocene from uh, Asia. Uh, but if these two animals met, Gigantopithecus is sort of built like a gigantic gorilla, and he doesn't have the weapons necessary to take on something as monstrous as, monstrous as Arctotus. Arctotus Simus is a giant bear. He was coming with all kinds of weapons, and there just would not have been a fight. Uh, Arctotus would have wiped him out. All right, you guys, if you have a question, go to my website, dinosaurgeorge.com. Click on the Ask Dinosaur George page. Send me your questions. Keep them short, because that's the best way to get them read, is if they're short. Until next time, you young people out there, always practice your reading. To everybody out there, practice your manners, and I'll see you guys soon.